the co-roundtable is working very hard to do the thinking around moral capitalism and how to implement moral capitalism. You have to implement it at the level of ideas and vision and goals and values. You have to implement it at the level of strategy, corporate strategy. You have to implement it at the level of management. You have to implement it at the level of delivering products, of service, of production, of manufacturing for the workers, for the community, for the customers. Now, moral capitalism is very important because it is the new stage in the evolution of human history, of human civilization. What we had was the emergence of the Industrial Revolution in, in Europe, really in Northwestern Europe in the 17th and 18th centuries. And this Industrial Revolution gave humanity the possibility of, of unimaginable wealth and comfort and ease and science, and we can send people to the moon, we can we can have airplanes, we can have cell phones, we can have internet, we can have iPods, we have, we have chemistry, biology. People live longer than ever before in human history, all because of the Industrial Revolution. Now the first phase of the Industrial Revolution was a struggle between the owners of property, the capitalists, and largely the workers who contributed their labor. And the two sides of that structure, of that struggle, were really sort of the socialists and communists on one side, and the free market capitalists on the other. But what we learned by 1990, 1991 was that socialism and capitalism, one, could not produce wealth, and two, they led to some very, very horrific, oppressive, tyrannous political regimes and conditions. So we no longer really believe, have confidence in socialism or communism anymore, but we're concerned still that free market capitalism can abuse power. So after the collapse of communism, people focused in on capitalism and saw that under capitalism there can still be abuse of power. And people were, were worried also the fact that markets inevitably are harsh places. New technology comes along, it drives out old technology. New companies come along, old companies fade away, people can lose their jobs, economic circumstances change. Jobs are outsourced from the United States to China, adding more wealth in China, reducing jobs in America. Workers have to relearn uh, something. They're, they're worried. How do they get the money to pay for their houses and things like that? So in the 1990s, people around the world started to look at corporate social responsibility. At the co-roundtable, we call this a moral form of capitalism. To distinguish it from a brute or brutal form of capitalism, Brute capitalism rests on the ideas of social Darwinism, that life is a jungle, it's a war, it's a struggle. Each of us, we just worry about ourselves, not about others or society. And the evidence seems to be that if you live that way, as the fa famous English philosopher said, life is nasty, poor, brutish, and short. It is better to live, and human beings actually are designed through our evolution, through the way our brains work, to be moral creatures, to be responsible, to be interdependent, to be mutually dependent. And Adam Smith, who wrote the book which outlined capitalism, pointed to the fact of division of labor and separation of tasks, specialization of function, creates all the possibilities for new wealth and new jobs. But when we divide things out to be specialized, we have to have some kind of relationship among them. So. Capitalism requires levels of trust. Capitalism, to generate a lot of wealth, requires values and confidence and consideration for the future. We at the Co Roundtable called this self-interest considered upon the whole. And we have a set of ethical principles to guide our thinking about how to consider things upon the whole. We also have implementation tools like Arcturus, where a company can look at its relationships and be strategic about how to enhance its value.